Today, I'm going to show you how to create parallax effect in Figma. We will be using loads of layers and you can find the Figma file in the description. So why do we need to split the image into separate layers? Well, the parallax effect works by moving elements at different speed to create that depth effect. If we used a single flat image, everything would move together and we would lose that depth effect. By splitting the image into parts like background, middle elements and foreground, we can animate each layer independently. That gives you the immersive 3D feel where some parts move faster, others slower, just like in real life. You can create these layers yourself in Photoshop by cutting the images into pieces. Or if you don't want to do extra work, you can grab them ready, made layered illustration from vectezy.com. They do have a tons of free resources that work perfectly for this. So I'm gonna search for like seawater and make sure I selected the PNG file and then we can just download it and use it directly in Figma. Some of the images comes with like a little tiny shadow so I will make sure to crop those to avoid any imperfection. So as you can see we have loads of different layers. Some of them are backgrounds which I made earlier. Some of them are single element and the most important with Figma prototyping is to name each layers. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the desktop frame and fill it with like dark blue color. Next, I'm gonna layer each element starting with the background. I'm gonna align it to the top and center and this is gonna be our main viewport. Then I'm gonna use the water and I'm gonna align it to the bottom of the background. On top of that, I'm gonna add our water divider, which is also made earlier to give like smooth transition effect between each section. So if I now stretch my frame, it's gonna have this smooth transition instead of just cutting one section onto the other. Next, I'm gonna place my mountains, so the main one in the middle, edge when the water is finished. Next, I'm gonna add another mountains, and this one I think is gonna look better if it's at the back. And the other little one, we're gonna keep it in the front. And again, we're gonna align it with the water. The last two elements, which will go into next section, I wanna move them lower. And next, I'm gonna add the text that will go into hero section. I think I'm gonna use the font which is called Instrumental. And I'm gonna use 128 pixels. For that, align it in the middle. I'm gonna place it behind the mountain. And next, we're gonna resize our frame to match the viewport. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate that frame and place it on the left side. And I'm gonna reno rename those layers into 1 and 2. So on the layer two, I've uh, decided I'm gonna scale that text a little bit because we want that transaction when the water is uh, overflowing and then unfolding the other elements. So let's go ahead and change elements on the frame number one. So I'm gonna select our water, water divider and the three icebergs which are at the top and I'm gonna stretch them. Next, I'm gonna go into prototype mode and I'm gonna connect frame number one to frame number two. So we want trigger to be on drag. Next, we want to make sure we have animation selected smart animate and we're going to use a slow curve with 600 milliseconds. So let's preview that. I'm not sure what happened to that font, but the transition I think could be slightly bit improved. So I'm going to move the background a little bit up to make sure the text is readable. And then I'm going to duplicate this frame one more time to transition it to the bottom section. So I'm going to move the text to the top. Next, I'm going to select our icebergs. So iceberg one, two, three. I'm going to scale them slightly, be slower and move them to the top. Next, I'm going to select water and water divider and also move them to the top. I think I'm going to scale the water slightly bit. So we're going to have more animation effects and it's going to feel more smooth. Next, we're going to get the background and also move it to the top to be aligned with the edges. Let's move our icebergs from the bottom to be shown in our viewport right now. And I'm going to duplicate that frame one more time because now what we want is the final transition. So the one we did just before was in the middle and this one is the final. I'm going to select all the elements and move everything to the top. The next thing I want, we're going to add some text. So I'm going to type the header, um, think font 48 pixels, and then we're going to do a paragraph text. For this one, I'm going to use 20 pixels and sans instead of sans serif. Let's make it slightly bigger. Next, let's select both of the text and shift A to close it with auto layout. I'm going to call it text and maybe space in between 8 pixels. Next, I'm going to select that text and move it into final frame. Maybe slightly lower our iceberg. 
Let's make sure it's aligned nicely. I'm gonna duplicate the text again, align it to the right, and maybe let's call it, this is other header to make sure we know which header is which one. <laughs> Next, I'm gonna rename those layer layers into text one and text two, select both of them, and paste them on the frame number three, which is our transition frame. We're gonna move the both text to the bottom so they are out of the frame, but they are still in the frame. I think I'm gonna slightly adjust that transition frame to create even more smooth effect between them. Let's see how it's presenting now. Still the text is a bit hidden. I'm gonna move that text, but before that, so right now our frames were connected into drag. For better preview, I'm gonna change that and connect them with the trigger of, of keyboard. So I'm gonna use key down to go down and the key up to go up. So they are all connected to each other to go backwards and forward. Let's preview it again using the keys. And also on the first screen, we're gonna add a little bit more movement to the mountains. So we can achieve that by resizing the elements and placing them in different points. So let's go back to our main viewport. And on the frame number three, which is our transition, main transition between the hero and the second section, I've decided I'm gonna center the main text. So on number four, we also need to center the text and the other one I slightly tweaked. And now the desired effect I wanted is there. And this is how we create a smooth parallel effect in Figma. Of course, there is always room to tweak even more. The final result depends entirely on the design you're working with and how you envision the transition. Maybe you want a slower, more supple movement or something bold and dynamic. It's all up to you. But remember, the key to nailing this effect is naming your layers properly, using Smart Animate in prototype mode, connecting all the frames correctly, and don't forget the transition screen between the sections. So that's it, Parallax Magic in Figma. If you found this tutorial helpful, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe for more Figma tips, and drop a comment if you have any questions or want to see more effects like this.